Hello, I'm Janet Harbison and I'm going to bring a tune from Bones to Beautiful. You could do this with any traditional tune because the idea is that what we have got with the tradition is the basic tunes. And the idea is that we as individual musicians can make the music our own. So making the music your own is definitely your goal as a traditional player. And uh, what we're looking for is a tune that we like a tune that has a bit of character about it and a tune that kind of gives us a little bit of a zing, uh, a, a good feeling in a day. So the tune I've decided to work on with you today is called The Old Leitrim. It's a jig and it goes very, it goes like this. me to play my version of it because I don't want to imprint your thoughts about it. So what I'm going to do is just give you the bones and then we'll build it up step by step. So right hand, we've got one sharp by the way, C sharp, C's are natural, is your theme. So start off two fingers G A, one, two, three, one, two, three, landing on the E and then you've got a little ending. Very simply. Okay, so put the two bits together. One, two, three, four, same again, one, two, three, four, that's your first phrase, second phrase, down the chord of D, with a different ending, okay, so taking that second phrase again, starting as the first, but then going down the chord of D, and then reiterating the chord of D, so let's put the two phrases together, to the first phrase which is now the third which is lovely when the um, repetitions make it easy for us so final phrase four fingers so definitely we've got some beautiful harmonies going on here because we're moving temporarily to the chord of G having come from the E minors so G A B D going down the chord of G and then thumb to A and fours coming way back down from G to D at the end. So that final phrase, down the chord of G, thumb on A, fours, same again, fours, and thumb on G or A. Now, all the way from the start. This time, I'm going to just put in an octave E as a drone. On the strong beats. Even if the harmony feels different, perfectly fine but it would be nice to go to G and then D. You could always make it a little bit more. More expansive harmonically and back to G. Good. Second part of the tune. So starting up Okay, so we're starting up on a theme that's following through from the fourth phrase first part but we're getting a little more expansive up here so you start you, you've done your fours coming in two one two three one two three again coming down from the deep skipping the C both times and then second phrase where have you heard this before it's the fourth phrase first part so you have that already third phrase will be the same as the first in the second part. Lovely. The last phrase is different. Come over and down the chord of G. So you're running up to top G and then coming down the chord, come to A and fours back down to D. And that's your second part. So all together, one, second phrase, Third phrase, same as the first. Last, up to top. And same again. G octave in the left. G. And you could go back to D if you wish. Back to the G. Now you could stay with the G at the end there. Or you could go to 
put in the harmony of C underneath it. That gives it a little bit more harmonic push to back to the beginning. Okay, so let's take our tune. The first part of the tune is, first thing we're going to do is find what is the salient character of the tune. Well, this opening is strong. So we have strong G, F, and as we traditional players would do, we would always use plenty of accent. So the other notes of the triplet rhythm, one, two, three, one, two, three, are going to be um, less volume. But lesser volume again will be the ornaments that we bring into the tune. So we've got cuts, runs, rolls, triples, trebles, slides, shakes, and there's probably a few more I haven't thought of. But the first and easiest one, which is just involving grace notes, just that single little note. Okay, what I did here was I just introduced a grace note on the strong beat. Now you could, you could cut on every single leading beat, but obviously that wouldn't be very tasteful. So you have to choose. But the idea is that when you are starting off, experiment and use your ornament, but put it in everywhere to see where you like it particularly well. So that's putting the ornament, the uh, cut on the leading beat. But we could put it on the second of the triplet beats, which actually is quite nice because you've got a sequence of four fingers, which is very comfortable for us our players. on the second of the triplet beats. What about on the third? And well, that works just as well. And you could give yourself a little, I suppose, mental exercise. Play it through one time with all the cuts on the first beat, first of the triplets, on the next of the triplets, and then the third of the triplets. Let's see if I can do it. So we're starting off. Um, let's see, and then, so it takes a bit of thinking about when you're actually making it deliberate and it's about exercising yourself so, so that there's no um, nightmares with trying to figure out what finger you need to use and that these little elements become smooth. And before you know it, you should have any one of those choices and that's just using cuts right what about a roll so well that's nice and easy isn't it now what about making it instead of just going with a simple roll run why don't we do so that's using four notes instead of three we could also do You know, make it a big, big, a big stretch. You're not always going to have an awful lot of time to do these things, but experiment. Don't be content with doing it one way, the only way, all the time, because the world is your oyster. You have lots to say. So um, that's taking it and looking at runs from above. You could also do, you could run from below. And essentially it's four notes, at least moving toward or from above. So from below or from above the main note. And you know, and it could also be a chord that you would introduce. So it could even just act as a chord. So that's runs. So you've got lots of options there on our, our little bit of melody. So cuts, runs, rolls. Now this is the fun one. Here's one. So these really work very, very well. You've got two different kinds of rolls. You've got the triplet roll, which for harp players is a beautiful roll, very easy to play. So you start off second finger or a leading finger, doesn't have to be the second, but the roll itself, one, two, three, 
thumb and then on the final note when you reach the thumb you must dampen the lower note of the roll or you're going to have that horrible sound carrying through so and then and if you're going down in this sequence then the damping is dead easy it's it's doubling up as placing for your next note but it could also be you know you can still do you can still do that action going upwards but it takes a bit more technical prowess okay so the alternative to using a triplet roll so if you listen to that the inner note da, 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 is what differentiates the triplet roll from the cut and tip roll so the cut and tip roll is where the G note is the inner note da, da, da. okay it's the harder one to do but it's the one that has a lot more street cred when I was teaching the TTCT the teacher training courses in Dublin at Colt Cultural and that was the role that all of the examiners wanted to make sure that all harp players could play. It's fiendishly hard, um, but it's worth, it's worth the practice. So you've got two different kinds of roles there and they're both long roles. Because of the way the shape of the melody, you can start on the G, finish on the G. You can also use rolls, four note rolls, but they would be where you're starting on a different note, ending on a different note. So you've got your cuts, runs, rolls, triples, triple, you know, triples or trebles. Actually, I used four notes there. Four, three, two, one. So you could also do. That's the favorite one. It's where you're kind of fanning your fingers, playing four, three, two fingering. And um, lots of us have perfected that quite well. It's quite an easy one. It's a bit easy. So uh, if you want to impress your friends, you might want to do a different type of treble there. So um, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two. So the idea is to practice where you can get absolutely clean, crystal clear fingering um, that you're going to get a nice clean uh, ornament because nobody else will appreciate the difficulty of what you're doing. All they want to do is to hear the darned tune and to savour it. And uh, the easier you can make it, um, obviously, the more cool it is. So, so the idea is to do your practice, is to do your practice. So, oh, trebles, yes. Now, um, I find the 4-3-2-1. If your fingers are loose and you're able to play close to the strings, uh, you shouldn't have any problem making sure that every single note sounds well. You can play the triplet on the beat or to the beat. Different sounds. It depends where you're putting the triplet in that um, or so it could be choices the thing is to experiment and to make sure that you're happy with the result and that is going to be easy to do because you're going to have lots of repetitions when you're playing the tune every tune will be played through at least three times so and you've already seen how the first and the third phrases are going to be the same bit of melodic material and then you have the natural repeats of each part so that little bit of the tune played three times through the whole tune how many times are you going to be playing it 12 so that's enough times to want to kind of experiment and do something different. Okay, so cuts, runs, rolls, triples, trebles, slides, you know, you know, lots of people can do, do, um, it's a bit gimmicky. I'm not sure that I would bother going there. I mean, there's slides that you can do on other instruments where you can, you can, you can slide or stretch the note by stretching the, by pressing down on the soundboard. Um, but it's something that other instruments will find easier to do and the idea is don't crucify yourself unless you're seriously out to impress in which case bring it on 
But in the meantime, there's more that we can be doing. Okay, so we have had a look at what you do with that. You can take any of the ornaments and, you know, to any of the other notes. And it's about choice. The idea that you would play it the same way twice is almost boring before you even start. So the idea is make it interesting. Make it interesting for yourself and for the other instruments that are, and the other musicians in your company that are going to be listening for all the cute and amazing things you do with the tune because it's the tune they're listening for. They will be impressed to see you um, playing lots of interesting left hand accompaniment parts but most traditional musicians won't appreciate what that's doing and a lot of the time if you make it too busy and too characterful it takes away from the tune. They want to hear what you and your imagination can do with the tune. So let's have a look at what we can do simply with the left hand to enhance. There are three main standards or of, um, or of developing the tune with the left hand. The first one is just bones and drones. That's the old bones, drones and doubles. So you've got um, and this is a very easy way of reducing. So if you find that you're in a session, and you've got some very strange and interesting accompaniments, especially on guitars, thrashing and bashing away, you can just immediately reduce what you're doing back to just the, um, the, the tune and the uh, drones and doubles. So a double is just literally. And it doesn't have to stay there. notes that are the doubles of the strong beats in the right hand and that's not um, catering for the the um, ornamentation that you're going to be continuing to do there so in that left hand and if you look at you're going to find as much as you practically need and certainly that will be enough for a perfectly good traditional environment if you look at the old transcriptions the few that exist of Carolyn's music you find this is exactly what Harpers were doing three and a half hundred years ago. So if it was good enough for them, it definitely is rooted in tradition. So that would be your, your first port of call. Very easy to do. It takes no effort. The tune is telling you everything. The choice you have is in whether you play an octave for a drone, whether you play three notes for a drone, whether you play a single note for a drone. And, and I wouldn't, that would be too heavy. So leave your drone. So it's literally drone, double, 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 drone, double, double. Okay, so that's your first port of call. The next one is to use chords, to look at what is the chord plan of your tune. First four chords, very straightforward, E, D, E, E. Okay, E, D, D, D for the second phrase. First is going to be the same as the third and then we've got that lovely move to the, the G chord and then D chord. Okay so in the last phrase you'd have G, G, D, D. Okay these are the chords that are spelled out by the tune itself. Doesn't mean that you have to stick to those exactly but if there are other accompanists in the session that you're playing in you want to go with the natural tuning of the melody. Now if you're a basic player and you're you're really only starting into traditional music this is a very simple way of just making it easy just take your chords you've got um if you wanted to even play all four chords not unacceptable and what I did I just broke up the E chord and you could even go 
going to the D chord for the whole of that second phrase. It works. Okay, so there you've got some very basic. Now, to take it um, a little bit further, you can change the shape of that E chord. If you've got E, G, B are your chords, your, your changes of position could be G, B, E or B, E, G. Drop it an octave. You could. Now, obviously, that's very low. It's very growly. It's not a place that's very pleasant to go. But you could extend the chord to maybe a tenth chord. When you're getting a lot of changes in the bass, you want to be careful to damp your, your bass. What about just playing a tenth? Now, this is a very common usage of bass line. It's harmonic in that you're, you're, at, you're um, reiterating what the chord is in the natural harmony. And so playing tenths or octaves. But when we get to the third aspect of what we're doing, think about your bass as your bass line. So we want to make it interesting. So you could. Um, now that worked out really well. So we ended up having a very interesting bass line. You really won't know what to do until these things actually, um, you know, you adventure with them. So just try them out, give them a go, see what you like, discard what you don't, embrace what you do, but practice all of it and have options up your sleeve so that you can move on with it. Okay, I'm just going to play the tune through once or twice. If you don't want me to imprint on your own thoughts about the tune, turn off the video now. Enjoy your playing. Bring your tune from bones to beautiful and I look forward to finding you in a session someday.